Hi, uh, I'm back. I'm Professor Gary Bernstein at the University of Notre Dame, Department of Electrical Engineering, and I'm going to introduce this uh, waveform generator, the Regal DG4162, and this uh, digital oscilloscope, uh, uh, Teledyne LaCroix HDO 4104-MS. So um, I just did a, a, a video about analog oscilloscopes, and now I'm going to introduce this uh, for the introduction to electrical engineering class. So we're going to start with the function generator. Here's the on button. Let's turn it on. A function generator creates a time-varying voltage. We can change many of the properties of this time-varying voltage, and I'll show you that in just a second. I want to show you the basic features of it, and then uh, we'll get to the oscilloscope. Well, let me turn on the oscilloscope now. Uh, because it may take a few seconds to boot up, and why not just do that while we're waiting? So here's the on button. I press it. I turn it on. All the lights come on. It's going to take a few seconds to boot. So let's get back to this while it's doing that. All right. This is a two-channel uh, arbitrary waveform generator or function generator, and uh, there there are four BNC connectors across the front. There's one that says output channel one, and another one that's output channel two. There's a button here that's lit that says channel one, and a button here that's lit that says channel two. These top buttons are lit when the, the control knob is changing values for channel one, or we're changing values for channel two. So only one of these is lit at the same time because we only have one set of controls. But we can turn on the output for channel one, and we can turn on the output for channel two. So both of those can be on at the same time. So this is a BNC connector, and this is how you plug in a BNC connector. There are two uh, holes, and there are two tabs. So you have to line those up, and it won't go on if they don't line up. So usually what you do is you put it in, you just turn it, and it just falls right into place. Push it in, and then turn it clockwise until it snaps, and then it doesn't, uh, then it doesn't uh, come out. So this is channel one, and um, we need another uh, another uh, BNC cable for channel two, oh, which is right in front of my nose here. So just for the heck of it, I'll plug in channel two. Now, I'm going to take the output of channel one, and I'm gonna plug it into the input of the oscilloscope of channel one, and I'm gonna take the output of channel two, and I'm going to plug it into the input of channel two. So far, nothing's showing up on the screen uh, because it's not, uh, I don't have an output and I haven't selected any inputs. So this produces a waveform and this shows us the waveform. Uh, let's get back to this. Now, the way this works is my menu is here. I can have different kinds of generators, uh, uh, functions, a sine wave, a square wave, a ramp, and a pulse. I'm not going to talk about the pulse, but I will talk about the other three. So I select sine wave for channel two. I can go to the channel one. I can go to channel two, for example, and I can select the square wave. And this shows me which one of these is selected. So let's go back to the sine wave and look at the buttons along the side. So this says, these are programmable buttons. They have a different meaning depending on uh, which uh, functions you've selected. So for example, here, uh, these buttons have a certain meaning. If I go to square wave or ramp, they change. All right, now, if I want to change the frequency, this is a little bit uh, tiring. Uh, I don't love this setup, but you get used to it after a while. So I'm gonna select the frequency, and there's a dot over the one. What that means is when I change the knob, I'm changing that digit. So I'm changing that, the, the period, uh, Whoops. I'm sorry, it was, it was frequency, and when I press it again, I get period. So I didn't mean to do that. So it's frequency of one kilohertz. It's, that's, the, that's the default. Two kilohertz, three kilohertz. Well, what if I don't want that? I want to have uh, half, half a kilohertz. These two buttons here change the position of the dot. So I pushed it over by one. The dot moved to the second uh, point. Uh, notice that this says 1.000,000,000 kilohertz. 
It's just saying one kilohertz. But now the dot is over the second digit. If I decrease that, I get to 900 hertz, 800 hertz, 700, 600, 500. I can increase it, and then I go to 1.5, 1 1.7, 1 2. So I can just keep on increasing this as long as I have the patience, and I want to be somewhere within the kilohertz range. If I want higher precision than that, I press the button again, and now I'm selecting uh, the, the second digit after the decimal point. Now I got 1.1 1 .1 kil uh, kilohertz, 1.2, 1.3. So you can see that's how that works. I can also input a number uh, by going, for example, if I want 58 uh, hertz, I've entered it. If I want five kilohertz, I go uh, five and I select kilohertz and then I say enter and I get five kilohertz. So there are shortcuts for doing that. If you, if you know the number you want, one kilohertz, enter, and I'm back to one kilohertz. So it can be done like that. All right, so that's channel one. If I wanna make changes to channel two, I select channel two. Now it's a square wave. And let's say I wanna change the amplitude. I press the amplitude button and now the amplitude is, is, uh, has the dot over it and I can change four, five volts peak to peak, six volts peak to peak, etc. Then there are other functions for each one. Offset, let's go back to channel one, to the sine wave. If I go down to offset, that's a DC value. If I change it to one volt, notice that the picture shows a line, which means it's shifted up by one volt and two, three, four. So it's showing an indication of what, what you're doing to the sine wave. All right, so that is the function generator. Now we go to the oscilloscope. Right now, I am expecting to see a 1.000 kilohertz signal with a five volt peak to peak amplitude, no DC shift and no relative phase compared to another waveform. I activate channel one very simply. I just press the one and um, I can press the default setup. That gets me started right away. And I now can choose the vertical gain. Channel one, I, my fault. I did not select the actual uh, output from the, uh, there we go. Everything's looking good. I always forget something, and here and what I forgot was to actually turn on the output from channel one. Uh, I'll bet you'll make the same mistake yourselves a few times. So I can change the vertical, I can change the horizontal. It's doing exactly what the analog oscilloscope did as far as what we see on the screen, but it's acting very different. It's it's functioning very differently because it uh, it is not showing a real time trace. It's showing data that's being stored and averaged. All right, so now we see the sine wave, and um, that's channel one. We also have a square wave on channel two. This time I'm gonna to remember to press the output of channel two, and channel two is uh, selected. And I'm gonna turn the gain down on channel two, and then we see a square wave. Now I can change the, the, the vertical gain relative to each other all I want, but there's only one time base. So when I change the horizontal display, they all change because they're, we're showing their time relationship uh, relative to each other. Okay, uh, why don't we stop there since that was a short introduction and I'll make a third video and show some of the other features.